So, hello. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about the life of Guillaume Le Hopital. So, um, Guillaume Le Hopital was born in 1661 to a really wealthy military family, and his father and his mother were both very, uh, came from very um, acclaimed and very wealthy um, families, and he actually served in the military before he pursued mathematics, and at 15, he resigned because he was diagnosed with nearsightedness, and this was actually a good thing because everybody knew that Guillaume was a very, very talented mathematician, so now he was finally able to pursue his passion, so he met his mentor, jo Johann Bernoulli, a master of calculus, through social circles and, you know, through his um, outstanding social standing, um, he was offered a lot of things that really helped him to become the mathematician that he is today, or he was. And in terms of personal life, he married a woman named Marie Charlotte de Vomilly de la Chesnelle, who was also a mathematician and he had four children with her. In terms of his mathematical accomplishments, there was only actually four people in the entire world that understood calculus at the time that he lived. Newton, the two Bernoulli brothers, and Leibniz. So to learn calculus, Hopital decided to pay Johann Bernoulli for tutoring. And in doing this, he also paid him um, the rights to, for the rights to his works and whatever he tutored him, like whatever he accomplished, whatever he found. So um, Bernoulli did this because um, L'Hopital had such a high social standing that he wanted to make connections and also gain that high social standing, which was very important at the time. With this in mind, L'Hopital published his acclaimed textbook, Analyse de Infimentant Petit, the first known calculus textbook. And this is a very important textbook because he put together Bernoulli's work in a very organized and comprehensive fashion. And it's been acclaimed and very famous. He also put out together another textbook on conics that was also very highly acclaimed. So in terms of what he actually did in the book, he was able to define the concept of a variable, the concept of a constant, and the concept, the concept of, a differential, uh, of a differential. So basically, he said that a variable is a is a number that could change go that can change and can go up and down while a constant is a number that has the same value and a differential is the very very small change in a in a variable is that that's what we call a differential which actually makes a lot of sense so if we look at this problem here we understand that he was able to famously find the limit of fractions when they're in the form 0 of 0 and that's what we learned in class. So we have e to the x minus one over x squared plus x. You take the derivative, since um, one minus one equals zero and zero plus zero equals zero, you're left with zero over zero. And, but L'Hopital's rule say you can take the derivative of each of the top and the bottom. So you end up with e to the x over two x plus one. And that just equals one because one over or sorry, yeah, that just equals one because it's going to be equal to one over one. So that is something that he found. He also solved the Braccio stone problem and actually found the arc length of a logarithmic graph. So for his legacy, uh, L'Hopital's textbook uh, was used as a basis for many modern calculus textbooks. And there was actually quite a bit of controversy between him and his mentor, Johann Bernoulli. And Bernoulli took a lot of the credit for the math done in his book. But L'Hopital is still credited with putting together the book and making it so clear and easy to understand. And this is a quote from a famous mathematician called Julian Coolidge. He was a shining example of a man of the highest social distinction whose love of learning drove him to devote much of his life, uh, short life to scientific writing. This is my bibliography. Thank you.